Hey, welcome to Foreplay, Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and couples therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. Hey, Lori, it's good to be back at it one more time. Yes, today we're going to talk about ED. Oh my goodness, every guy's favorite subject. Right, right. and if they want to find us on the web, they can find us on foreplayrst.com and send us feedback or questions. We love to hear from people and we really do get to their questions. So Absolutely. thanks everybody for writing in. That's great. We'll do mailbag episodes soon. Absolutely. So ED. Yeah. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> what about it? I think it's something guys are really reluctant to talk about. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, I think guys in general take great pride in the function of their penis. Oh, yeah. And so when it's not working the when, way that we think it's supposed to be, we tend to do a freak out. When it falls down, you know? it's like the whole world crumbles. Yeah, but I think one of the things that we should at least clear some things about is like, 18 to 30 million people in the U.S. alone, 18 to 30 million males struggle with some form of sexual dysfunction. Right, right. right. So it is way more prevalent, especially the older you get, right? I think it's 40% mm -hmm. of men after the age of 40. Right, um, have at least one experience in ED, right? That's right. Yeah. Their first. And I think the first one is the freakiest one, right? Yeah, the first time it happens. The first time it happens. Yeah. Because then they're afraid, oh, this is a pattern, this is going to keep happening. Mm -hmm. But it could happen for so many reasons. You yeah. know, maybe they had too much to drink, or yeah. they just got a little anxious, or they were a little tired. I mean, no big deal. Yeah, that may be a good point to make, too, is that occasional dysfunction does is not normal. mean is normal. It does not mean that you have ED it does in not. the capital letter sense, right. right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, I think... If men could just accept that as, okay, you know, it's, it's a one-off, no big deal. And I think women, you know, it's not that big a deal. You know, is now, like, is, oh, that, is that, that really, is that, that is really, really true, Lori? true, Is that really I, true? I swear that is true, Adam. I think that what women freak out about is, does this mean he's not attracted to me? Oh, because yeah. women, you know, equate an erection with, you know, his body is attracted to me. Mm -hmm. And so when he has ED, as long as he's reassuring and says, oh, there's nothing about you, baby. You know, just, yeah. I mean, that's it's all it is. the wine I had at dinner, yeah. Yeah, it's the wine I had at dinner. It's, you know, or I still think you're sexy, too bad. You know, I, yeah. I can't do it tonight. And, and it doesn't mean that they can't make love, mm. right? They can touch. He can give her an orgasm. Right. I think it's the withdrawal. Yeah. You know, when he freaks out and he's like, oh, okay, it's over. It's yeah. like, you know, his his penis, whether it makes it or breaks it, means the sex encounter is over. And I think that freaks out women. Yeah, when they total, when it just, it ends completely because right. it happens. Right, I mean, I think there's a lot of male-centric sex. You know, sex mm -hmm. is over when he climaxes. You know, right. Okay, he's done and that's it. He goes to sleep or, you know, he, and I think that that is disturbing, you know, yeah. because so many women, maybe they're not finished at the same time. Yeah. Well, and I think for men to be able to reassure um, their partner of, of all the things that you're talking about, they almost have to get over the anxiety gymnastics that are happening in, in their head about performance and what that means for them. Yes. And I think you said the key word, performance. Yeah. Men think they have to perform in bed. And that doesn't mean great touching, great technique, being a great lover. It means being hard and firm, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it is directly tied. To, <laughs> that is the it performance is that they're thinking right. about. Yeah, if the little general is performing well, then I'm performing. I'm performing yeah. well, right? I mean, it is tied. It is tied. So much tied to identity and to who we are that even if we can he's justify, he's good. I'm good. He's good. I'm good. I mean, even if we can justify <laughs> mentally that there is something going on, that there's a reasonable explanation for that it sometimes doesn't override the hit to the, to the, the male ego. ego. Right, yeah. the sexual ego. The, I mean, men say all the time they just feel so humiliated about this mm. and so anxious. Yeah. You know, just, and, of course, the anxiety is one of the main feeders of ED. Yeah. So it happens, they start thinking about it, obsessing about it, right. more likely that it's going to happen again. And then you have right? more anxiety about the anxiety itself. Yeah. Um, and and that's, just, that's just a vicious spiral. It is a vicious spiral. Yeah. And I think that there's some aspect that a lot of clients that I've run into that have this problem, they're so reluctant to go to a doctor. Right? Sure. And I think if we can just kind of get over the fact that 
or understand. I, I, do men ever go to doctors? I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's toxic. that's an ego hit in and of itself. Just going, <laughs> right? even if I just have a cold, I going have to a the doctor. I have a body. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Our bodies are temple. It's supposed yeah. to. It's never supposed to fail us. That's right. But I think if we can understand that, like eighty percent of ED is there's a medical reason behind it, mm -hmm. and so there seems to be this acceptance that men have to do to be able to say, okay, this is in a lot of ways out of my control. Mm -hmm. And there is explanations well, for it. Well, especially as a man it. in ages, right? Yeah, 45, sure. 50, then, then it can be medically produced. Mm -hmm. But usually in the younger years, there's not as much medical you know, right. problems that are actually happening. Yeah, that's a good clarification. Yeah, sure. but I would say definitely 45, 50. And the big issue, and this is I think something that doctors should be screaming about is that ED is the first marker of heart disease. Oh. So ED means that the capillaries could be plugged, mm -hmm. you know, with cholesterol and plaque, and that, you know, he doesn't get his heart and he doesn't get his sperm, or he's having trouble. And so how do you know it might be heart disease versus something else? I mean, it, it's crazy, but a tiny pot belly is an indicator in men of heart disease and then coupled with ed you need to run not walk to your doctor yeah. and i i would say you know definitely think about going to see somebody who's you know an expert in diet yeah. you know who really gets you off carbohydrate you know so that your lipids get clear that would be the first step lose the weight lose the belly weight you know, get clear on diet. Don't let them put you on medication until you're, it's absolutely necessary. But it, you rule you out know. those other things. Yeah, and yeah. you rule that all out. Would you say that that's, that should be somebody's first stop, is the doctor? If yeah. They see this, if this is frequent the and The urologist ongoing. particularly. Right. Oh, you mean, no, should they go see a nutritionist? Or? Well, I mean, just that they should... No, they should seek medical advice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not if you're 30 necessarily, then maybe not. Yeah. But if you're 40, 45, 50, and you're starting to have ED a, as a regular pattern, yes. Yeah. You know, you really need to know your blood lipids, you know, what your blood pressure is. And I think that's about the age where men start taking blood pressure medicine, which mm -hmm. is absolutely all about hydraulics, right? Yeah. Raising the blood pressure or lowering the blood pressure. You know, when you start monkeying with that, you know, the, the penis and erections, it's all about hydraulics. Yeah. So... That's a major one, and diabetes and heart disease, that kind of toxic Bermuda Triangle, so to speak, is, that, you know, is yeah. a bad one. Yeah, because you're, what you're recommending there, too, is that we don't just run and get a prescription for Viagra as fast as we can. Right. Right. I mean, that, that, Address the underlying issue, if there is one. Yeah. And then, yeah so that you, because it's a health issue. Yeah. And I, I've sat with a lot of men you know, who are about 45 and have a little pot belly just starting to struggle with erections. I'm like, look at dudes, you gotta lose the belly. You gotta have a flat belly or you're gonna lose your erection by 50. Yeah. I mean, and they're like, really? I'm like, really? Go, you know, get this taken care of, do it now. Yeah. You know, so. And that gets, that seems to get coupled with a lot of different stage of life issues as well. Mm -hmm. Like just as, as we age and start to feel that lack of ability to perform as we once did when mm -hmm. we were in our youth and um, that that gets coupled with sexual performance as well, and that's just that is just a huge blow that you're trying to trying to deal with. But what I hear you saying too is that there are some easy, quick things that we can do to rule out the, other the things. physical causes of yeah. ED. Yeah, they they want to go to their urologist and have their testosterone checked mm -hmm. because testosterone is kind of the governing hormone. That if it's low, potentially too low, they can also have ED. Yeah. You know, so that's a big one. Get their blood lipids checked. That means, you know, what is your HDL and your LDL and your triglycerides. Make sure that that's in proper proportion and get to a nutritionist who knows something. I mean, I'm going to plug uh, Dr. Eric Westman. He's at Duke. He's the guru when it comes to um, diet, obesity, and blood lipids and curing all this. I send a lot of my patients here to him, and you can find all his work online as well. So... What about, if I understand right, and you tell me if I'm correct in this, but smoking, alcohol, any uh, kind of drug use, yeah, like these okay. are things that, that affect, drug it, use, affect it as well. Yeah, right? yeah, killer. I mean, smoking is just a killer for, right, any kind of peripheral artery disease and heart disease is just going to be exasperate, exacerbated by smoking. 
Mm. Now, it literally kills you. So and it kills your penis. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a penis killer. <laughs> it's a penis killer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, yeah. put down the little ones if you want the big cigar one. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Oh, that's that's great. That, that makes sense for sure. So I guess if we're if we're looking at this like medically as first, that's kind of yes. the first step, right? Yeah. So maybe when we come back from the break, we can talk more about like um, other underlying issues that are not that are not medical. Okay. That's, that's a percentage, right? Too. I think I mean, so too. And and also for younger men, we'll we'll come back to that. Awesome. As well. Okay, you're listening to Four Play Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson and Dr. Adam Matthews. We'll be right back. Wanting Sex Again, How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them, it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique, and that combination together helps marriages be happy. Improve your sex and improve your relationship with Awakening Center for Couples and Intimacy. Find out more at awakenloveandsex.com and sign up for their next couples retreat weekend hosted by Lori Watson. Awakenloveandsex.com. Awaken what's possible. Okay, you're listening to Four Play Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson and couples therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. We are back talking about ED. I'm going to talk right now about how ED is also impacted by factors that are not just medical. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some of the ones that would be off the top of your head that would be kind of the biggest ones that are the non medical? Well, I mean, I think obviously relational issues yeah. uh, in terms of, you know, whether or not the person cares about the other person or is in love with them or you know maybe there's so much tension in the relationship they literally can't get it up yeah you know, so do you penises are like barometers yeah. i mean they're sensitive barometers about yeah. relationship as well so there can be a lack of an emotional connection that's playing itself out physically i think in so that sense, right? i think so yeah, yeah. i mean it, i mean this is what women are afraid of that it means he's not attracted to her but often He's been having sex with her. He is attracted to her technically, mm-hmm. but sometimes the behavior and the dynamic between them maybe it's just so conflictual and and hard that mm-hmm. you know he just can't respond any longer. Yeah, and they're probably my guess would be in that case that they are not addressing those relational issues. That's right. Right, that they're avoiding talking about them or avoiding right. getting His help for them. His penis cannot avoid it. Yeah. You know, the penis doesn't lie. It. The penis doesn't lie. Yeah. But also, I would say, you know, in young men, I mean, it, it was very unusual when I started practicing, say, 25 years ago, for a yeah. young guy to come in and have ED. Yeah. And now I have them by the droves. What is what is that about? That's well, I think it's about their use of porn. Okay. That, you know, they're using porn to kind of build up stimulation to this very high point, and then they have an ejaculation. And then with a single partner, they don't reach those levels of excitement. Mm. And so they don't stay erect, they can't penetrate. You know, it's almost like without that, they're training their bodies to have these high levels of excitement. And that's kind of impossible to replicate with one partner. No, I was just gonna say it puts a lot of pressure on your partner and it's and it's next to impossible. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. you can't get the same kind of build up that you can. Right. And I mean pain. we've talked about porn in other episodes, but I think that women are not really competing with pornography like the, the woman in the porn, they're competing with the dopamine in the man's mm-hmm. brain. Yeah, you know, the they, physical they can't, response. You know, they, right, and so a lot of young men experience ED in their one-on-one relationships uh, for that reason. Mm. Yeah, that creates, that seems to me to be create a big problem that is also difficult to address because you wouldn't necessarily think that if you can, you might think that if you can masturbate to pornography that you should be able to stay erect exactly. in a sexual encounter. But that's not the case. That's not the case. Yeah. But I mean, I think men masturbating to pornography, they're looking at multiple images. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
it's not just a single Playboy page, you know, that a, you know, a 15 year old found a hundred years ago. Right. And right. he's masturbating to that and to really more to his fantasy about that. It's mm-hmm. like he's, he's masturbating to image after image after image. Yeah. And that's a different thing than partner sex. Porn does not translate well to partner sex and it impacts penises. Yes. Porn partner penis problem. <laughs> I think <laughs> Big I, I think problem. I think you just found the title to your next book. I'm not exactly I'm not exactly sure. Our next it, book. Our next book. That's right. All right. Come right on. Yeah, that's good. I think the other thing that it's important to realize too is that erectile dysfunction can have a lot of it can occur concurrently with mental health issues like depression and anxiety, even just a high level of stress. And I think that those those things need to be looked at as well when you're talking about erectile dysfunction because it it seems like that 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 there's a lot of stuff that's turned inward. There's a lot of shame involved with mm-hmm. that. There's a lot of you know depression and anxiety are also going to play a part in like just performance and ego and how you feel oh, about yeah. yourself. And that seems to be a spiral as well. Have you seen that with I, I have with too. your patients? Yeah, I think I think you're dead on with that. You know, yeah. unfortunately, I and sometimes men take SSRIs. You know. Mm-hmm antidepressants, and they don't really impact erections, but they will impact ejaculation. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that can be part, sex is so tricky. I mean, it can be part of everything. It's maybe he doesn't ejaculate, and then she doesn't know why, and she starts to be critical of that or anxious about that, and pretty soon it's like, oh, I can't, you know, I don't want to do it, and he can't get it up because he's just it's not going to end well. His anxiety comes in. Mm-hmm. It, these things can become bigger problems if they're not addressed right away. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so part of that then is addressing any of those issues that are part of life and getting help for those so that it doesn't continue to spiral and build. Yeah, and, and then develop that. relational problems that are you know, much harder to fix, really, than penis problems. Yeah, no, that is true. <laughs> So and, and you know I think some men are reluctant um, to ask for what they need. Mm-hmm. They kind of think that an erection means it should happen magically. They should think sex, and they should get erect. Mm-hmm. And as men age, I mean they actually need stimulation. That is so normal. Yeah. You know so so then they think well I'm having ED because I'm not getting erect automatically. Right. But that that doesn't happen like past 45 very easily. It's like they need stimulation. So that would seem to me that then... That's uh, not ED. Yeah. That's normal. That's normal. But men think it's ED. Okay. So it gets... Con- it, yeah, I could see that. It would get confusing that that's... Yeah. If you're not aware that that's something that should be happening. I mean, uh-huh. it's weird to think it should be happening, but it should as we get older. Yeah. It's a normal, it's a normal, normal. side of aging. Normal. Okay. Right. So what do you think, too, about this idea that there are times in relationships where sex, either, either because of problems in the relationship or because of other complications that sex is expected and maybe it's it shouldn't it shouldn't be expected uh-huh. right and that there is some conflict there that's going on that is also causing ED. I don't know if that makes sense right or whatever. well I'm I mean the that, thing but... that comes to mind that most obvious is like when people are trying to make a baby mm. you know certainly men struggle with ED when they are afraid of impregnating the woman sure and maybe they're married and they're planning on children but there's an unconscious motive that says I'm not sure I'm ready. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not sure I'm ready to be a father, and so um, his penis won't perform. And I think that likewise, any kind of relational stress or problem that is between them, you know, he may not be able to perform. It's an unconscious part. Or it may be, like you mentioned pregnancy, the other thing I thought of is I've had seen couples where they are having fertility issues mm-hmm. and then sex becomes a chore rather oh, than something yeah. that is enjoyable. Infertility problems are a killer when it comes yeah. to sex. You're so right. Yeah. And so that's another thing that could that just come in where sex becomes less than what it's intended to be and what it should be between the couple, mm-hmm. which would mean, again, mm-hmm. penis as barometer, right? It's yeah. indicating something yeah, that's that going on. So what do you think are some things, uh, we talked about some of the causes, right? What are some of the things that, uh, obviously seeking medical help was one that we talked about in the first part, but what are some other things, if it's psychological, if it doesn't, if we're not finding a medical solution that people should do to start to get help for this? Well, obviously seek out a therapist yep. like yourself yep, you know, like to you. talk yep. about, you know, what, what's happening on the inside, mm-hmm. uh, especially deal with anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I, I would say that, 
you know, have some know-how about what sex is all about as we age and not be freaked out about that. You know, so sex education, can be great. educating education. about it, about yeah. what's really going on, not yeah. being scared to educate yourself. Right. Yeah. I'll talk to too. your doctor. Try to talk openly with your doctor. Yeah. Like being, I think being honest with your doctor, too, mm-hmm. I think, and your therapist. I think that's one of the things. Oh, yeah. I think, I think <laughs> like, when, that would be good. when you go in to seek help about this, I think there has to be a kind of no holds bar type of just lay it out there about what is going on mm-hmm. and, and really kind of get everything, be honest, because I think that's mm-hmm. one of the things that your doctor or your therapist cannot help. If you're not being honest about what's happening because you're embarrassed, you're embarrassed by it. Right. I mean, I think psychologically, sometimes the arousal pattern, you know, that men have sort of formed, we all form arousal patterns from childhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's where they're first laid down. And maybe they don't like their arousal pattern. And so, you know, they don't feel like it's in time, that it's part of them. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they had a molestation experience or something. And so those images come into their mind. And they have ED. I mean, there are a lot of conflicts that can happen that impact erections. Yeah. And those can be worked through, totally yeah. worked through. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, I think that's one of the biggest takeaways for me is that this these these things are are um, I hate to use the word fixed, but they're fixable. They're they're manageable anyway. Like you, they can be addressed if we can just kind of uh, get to get to people that do the work. I think the other thing we're interested in your thoughts about this too is that. And this is this it seems to be a theme in our podcast. Like it comes up is like talking about it with your partner. Mm-hmm. Like I think a lot of times men hide what's going on again because it's an ego hit. We don't want to necessarily admit that it might be a problem. I'm shaking my head. You can't see yes, me, but I am vigorously. Yes. vigorously. I think this may be a theme with every single one we've done so far. But talking about it with your partner, bringing them in to kind of what is happening and what your thoughts are with it, is one is just a step that just goes a long way to start trying to remove some of the stigma and some of the anxiety. I uh, think so too, it. because especially if men feel anxious about it and they stop approaching, because mm-hmm. that happens a lot. Men yeah, feel, they withdraw. Oh gosh, you know, I might have ED. I won't perform. Yeah. And so they withdraw, and then she's like, okay, he's really not attracted to me. He doesn't want sex, and he may have great desire, mm-hmm. but he's just anxious about his arousal. You know, yeah. It's not working the way it did work, and he doesn't know how to say that to her. And Yeah. Yeah. And talking so, would be good. Talking, <laughs> really talking good, would be guys. good. Yeah. I do think that is one of the hardest things, like to get over that, that kind of anxiety that just goes on that, with the voices in your head that start to kind of keep you, keep that shame about ED running, mm-hmm. and that tape that's just, mm-hmm. we're just automatically feel of moving past that to be able to talk to your partner, talk to a doctor, talk to a therapist, um, and start to seek out some of the solutions that are that are readily available for people. Right. Most of ED is curable in some way, and of course, we have Viagra, which fixes yeah. all kinds of issues, you know, yeah. valve problems, and it actually does fix the heart disease-related problem for a time. Yep. You know, so, I mean, Viagra is a great drug. All the Viagra like drugs. So, yeah. Yeah. And then addressing any any kind of the the underlying, psychological underlying yeah. issues that are a part of that are part of going on. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for listening to Four Play Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson and couple therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. Please find us on the web or Facebook and Twitter. We're on fourplayrst.com. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much.